This week is really cool. We've got uh, a Rev Road Portfolio Company, Scenting Academy, with founder Keith Wong. And he talks about, uh, he has some really great stories, but he talks about how we should never squelch that uh, creative entrepreneur fire um, in uh, in all that we do. And, and he's a perfect example of this as he runs an online art school, Scenting Academy, once again. And they're coming up with this really great event happening in July called Vision X Live. He's going to tell us about that too, but keeping that fire, keeping that creativity going, great points. Let's dive in. Let's get started. Let's go. So Keith, why don't you tell us what Scenting Academy is? What are you doing? What is your mission? How are you changing the world? I want to hear that. Well, first of all, just stop learning to create generic art. You have a voice, so it's never too late to discover your artistic voice and just express yourself with confidence. So join Sentient Academy and learn from this iconic master artist to find your voice and just enjoy your life as an artist. And how are you doing that, Keith? Well, the way we do it is we seek out the most iconic artists. Like okay. people want to be, say, Picasso or someone, right? But those people, they're dead. But we are able to find the living masters that are still alive and we capture their secrets. And then deliver to you it doesn't matter where you live what you're doing it could be in the middle of the night if you just feel like you want to learn something and express yourself just log in turn it on and you have the living master right there in your bedroom cool. or your studio or your kitchen wherever it is and just start learning from them and soon enough you'll be creating something that you never thought it's possible cool yeah so keith um drop some names give some shout outs who are some of the artists you guys are working with i want to know oh well <laughs> Um, typically, we have our in-house sentient crew that started with, you know, Brian Mar Taylor, the okay. co-founder, okay. and David Dibble. He used to teach at BYU, and now he's just creating this award-winning pieces. Um, Jeff High, oh, yeah. he's been working on a lot of high-end, you know, private commission portraits for mm -hmm. um, some of the big families here we know, like the Romneys uh -huh. and the um, Huntsmans and oh, all cool. of those. Never yeah. heard of them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're not from Utah. <laughs> Just kidding. But yeah, and of course we have you know Suchitra Bosle. She's from India. She lives in Chicago now. She's just amazing artist. And there are a lot more. I I wish I oh Josh Clare and Mike Mom Alvin. Any like okay. anyways, there many of them. So Keith, um, I I just had a quick question, and then I want to I want to turn it over to Jake here for a second. But when I hear you're training artists to be artists me as a non-artist gets concerned like, oh, that's not for me because I, I'm not an artist and so I, I probably wouldn't qualify. Is that true to think that? I don't know. Like, especially we're here today to talk about Midnight Founders, right? Yeah. Like, none of us think it is possible to do what we do right. until you really go and do it. And I think everything is possible if you want it enough. Mm. That's actually one quote from Chicken Soup for the Soul that I read a long time ago and stuck with me. Cool. And really, everything is possible. It doesn't matter if you think you're an artist or a non-artist. You have something to say. Hmm. And it's our job here to give you the most condensed version of the instruction that your light bulb just keep turning on and you all of a sudden you can create something that you didn't even think it's possible. Hmm. Yeah, so, yes. And you've been to one of my I art. I love it. Nice. I'm a huge so, fan of Sentient Academy. Yeah. Yeah, love it, love it, love it. God, it's really fascinating. Uh, I So I have three little kids at home, and um, all three of them in their minds right now are like Picasso-level Art. mm. artists. And so your fridge is full of art. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, my fridge, Everywhere. my parents' fridge, my grandparents' fridge, <laughs> like their, you know, their friends at school get art projects. Uh, and <clears throat> for me, I think, you know, I think it's my job as a parent to like, reinforce that mm -hmm. like you are an artist right just what you said really exactly. resonates with me and i i think that like the world is so tough on people and it like it like beats you down mm -hmm. and uh kind of takes that creativity yeah. away and so i it, really good right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and like I, I went to a i went to a lecture uh, a few years ago and the guy that was lecturing said um, it even affects your relationships at home, like with your spouse and your kids. Like mm. you get to a point that you don't feel comfortable being yourself or, you know, expressing yourself. 
And he said that the way that he overcomes it is by being daddy dinosaur. Hmm. Like he gets on the, gets on his kid's level and like plays with them and is just yeah. really goofy. And that's the way he lets it out. Anyways, your, your mission of like expressing creativity and like sharing your voice really resonates with me. I think that's fantastic. And I have the same thing, right? I have three kids and the youngest one, she's five now, but every day she wake up with full confidence that I am an artist. <laughs> I am an artist. Period. Like that Good is for her. who we are. Like we were born that way. And then we, at one point something happened, life happens, right? Reality kicks in and people tell you you're not good enough yeah. and feel shame of your own um, production or artwork, whatever it is. And then starting to hide that side of you. But um, if you really think about it, a lot of good memories we have as a kid, it's some creativity are related. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't let the world be you down. Just join Sentient Academy. Sentient Academy. And it'll help you bring Everyone that inner artist out of you, mm -hmm. whether you think you're good at it or not. Yeah. And I, and I think knowing a little bit about Sentient Academy, where you guys really shine is those that are aspiring, aspiring to be artists for a profession, perfect place for you. Those that just want to get better at it and increase their hobby level, perfect audience or perfect place to go, right? Or those that just even have a little bit of artistic ability like me that just want to get a little better in what we're doing for our profession or to express ourselves, also the perfect place to go, right? I think a very important thing to realize, and it took us forever to find this, and recently we just finally get the clarity. This is what happens, and this came from our students when they come to workshop, we talk to them, and mm -hmm. we always listen to them. And they say they love Sentient Academy for this reason because they feel empowered mm. and that just kind of like shocked me and realized, oh, it doesn't really matter where you are right now, currently at your skill level. It doesn't matter where you want to be as far as your goals or destination. You're empowered here. We believe in you. Mm. We want you to be who you are and just feel that power to go out there to make it happen. It doesn't matter if you just want to have a piece of artwork that you are proud of to show your grandkids to say, look, I can do it. Or you want to be out there, take on the world to be best selling artist. We give you that confidence to make it happen. Mm. And I think that's really different because a lot of schools, when you go in, you get trapped in this idea of, I need to arrive at the skill level before I can make anything happen. And next thing you know, you feel, you feel powerless mm. that I'm not good enough mm -hmm. mentality kicks in. And I think a lot of that really drives what I'm doing here as a founder to really think about what we're doing. Mm. It's not really about, I mean, it's always about business, but there's a bigger picture here is about empowering your end users. Mm. If you're able to empower them, it just makes your job so much more enjoyable because yeah. you see people's life change. You see, you, you know, you put a face on someone's face and that to me is huge. Love the mission, Keith. Yeah. I'm seeing a theme, operating yeah. in uncertainty. Yeah. <laughs> expressed that's it right. in different words, but that's the that's same, right. same message. I love that. Yeah. Um, okay. So is Sentient Academy your first startup? How did you mm -hmm. get into this? Is it, have you been, are you a oh, serial no, entrepreneur? Go. I can hear a story coming out. Yeah. I love this. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is my first startup. And no, um, it's not. Is it really? It, yes, it is. It is, huh? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I didn't I've been that. in corporate finance for my whole career, like over 10 years, and oh. I always worked in enterprise companies. So to me, um, my past 10 years is all about the, the only difference is the number of zeros that I see. Yeah. And, um, but um, it just kind of get to a point where it doesn't make any sense anymore. It's just like, hey, this company has more zero, two more zero than the other one. Um, that kind of just helped me to search for something that I really enjoy doing. And then as a finance person, I was able to prove myself by helping the company become more profitable. So company after company after company, I helped them to make a lot more money. And then the question kicked in, can you do this? on your own as starting your own company. And wasn't there a stint there, Keith, that you were in the casinos, working in the yes. casinos? Oh, that's another, that would be the next episode. A whole other chapter, right? That would be the next okay. episode. But All at right. that point, I was kind of like, well, 
I I learn a lot of stuff. I can really make things happen. And you know, I'm sick of coming up with a plan and then when you execute the team because it's an enterprise company, right? The team is so big, sure. you can't really make things happen. So I decided to open my own shop. And when I met my co-founder Brian Mar Taylor, he's mm-hmm. actually my neighbor. He's this renowned artist, really just amazing. And our kids happen to be in the same classroom um, in elementary school. And we live in Alpine. So if you Google it, like medium income in Alpine, it's pretty high. And then we one day we talk and we discover that there's no art teacher in our kids' elementary school. And we're starting to kind of like look at each other like, wait, our kids love art. What is going on here? So him as an artist and you as a businessman thought, hey, we can solve this problem. Exactly. Is that right? That's how everything got started. And of course, when I saw his um, Instagram, he told me I'm an artist. And I'm like, yeah, you're an artist. I'm an artist. Everybody's an artist. (laughs) And then he showed that to me. And I was like, wait, what? Then I really want to start painting again. I stopped for 15 years. Why? Why did you stop? Corporate life. Uh, Just busy. Like that thing of like, you know, like there's... um, work now daddy you need to go to work yeah stop messing around with the pens and yeah. easels and all that stuff we, we pack it away but every time we move we will bring it my wife always asks me why do you keep bringing this easel and all the oils and brushes I'm like, one day i want to retire i want to do this so when i met brian um it's funny i posted on linkedin and said oh i met my new hero i want to quit my job and just pen all day hmm. and of course that kind of caused some um angst comments in the company they're like you know you don't you don't want to do it and me as a competitive person when people say you don't that means i will (laughs) (laughs) actually that triggered me to be like what do you mean there's another thing right (laughs) right competitive fire right right? like no you won't i'm like heck yeah i will so i did i quit and then started this whole thing so that's kind of how everything got started and we want to really just say hey there's a big problem here right kids they should be there fearlessly expressing themselves and creating yeah but we don't have the resources to help them so yeah. h- what can we do to make that happen and that's kind of our end vision right like to serve you know, young artists at the level but we have to kind of start from somewhere so we started with the kind of like brian's level like pro- advanced to professional level of the artist who's um, invested a lot of time and money into their art learning education career and they just need more to make it happen. Mm. So we started out with that and then just went from there. So Keith, what, um, I mean, the, the, the title of the, the podcast or the name of the podcast is the Midnight Founders Podcast, right? So what makes you a Midnight Founder? <laughs> what, how could you describe yourself in that way and why? Oh man, Mid- I love the name, by the way. Whose idea is that? It was just Both. a combination. Yeah. Open, just brainstorming session, right? Okay. It's probably Jake's actually. Jake's Jake's on it. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, it was a group effort for sure. Okay. We had this idea of like entrepreneurship is uh, a grind, and a lot of times okay. it requires more effort than just a normal nine to five job would. Mm-hmm. But we don't highlight those stories all the time. We need to tell those exactly. stories, right? Yes, and I love that. That's why I'm here because people always see that shiny part of the success story, and oh. I want to be my own boss. I want to, you know, wake up whenever I want, blah, blah, blah. I want to have unlimited PTO and all that. But when you start this startup venture, you just sign yourself up for never going to sleep ever again until. <laughs> like, even if you make it, you still won't sleep. And I think why I'm a midnight founder, it's really to that degree. Like I, I, bar- I sleep, but I barely sleep. So that just means my brain never stops thinking. Yeah. And it's always turning when I'm sleeping. Um, I did a really weird, funny, I studied sports psychology mm. back in the days. Mm. And I know how powerful your mind is. And um, for example, athletes, they will train, like you're a basketball player, you will train through free throw in your head mm-hmm. without actually touching the ball. So mm-hmm. if you're injured, you're still training. Mm-hmm. and you train your brain and, and then like yes like the muscle memory. memory and all that stuff so when you go back on the court you still remember that right so i learned that and i started to tap into that my power as a person to tap into my potential so i train myself to um 
focus on certain problems and I take it to bed with me, don't do this at home. <laughs> it's bad. But when I'm sleeping, I'm able to solve the problem in my sleep. And I've done it for the past years. Like I designed Consistently? Or does it just happen? Or are you able to turn to a degree on? where we like back when I was doing finance, we have spreadsheets, certain formulas, things just won't Keith work. He's really is a midnight founder. He's doing founding work at, like, at I midnight. I will solve the formula in my dream that I can plug <laughs> that into Excel That's in real great. life, and then boom! But I cannot solve that in real life during the day because our brain is consuming all these stimulus and try to solve oh, the problem as the sti stimulus come in. But when you're sleeping, you might doesn't take in more information, then you start digesting. It's focus, right? Yes, you're digesting the information you get from the day. So I'll train myself to kind of put that problem in my head and continue kind of like this. In this room, that's really quiet. And then you see everything clearly. And then you kind of dig deeper and somehow it just kind of come to me I, and I was able to solve it. Mm. And then when I wake up, I have this solution. So yeah. to me, I'm a midnight founder to that kind of Wow. nerdy degree but i like that i, I don't know that skill. That's a it's skill. not healthy yeah. though it's that's a, that's it's amazing. not healthy <laughs> yeah uh that's amazing i know right? yeah um okay next question is uh we would love to know like over your time and and you've made this shift from the corporate world to the entrepreneurial world and so this lesson could come from either that transition or uh in either role right but but what's something you've learned um in your career yeah, a question. lesson that you have that has made a difference and has made you more successful that you'd like to share with young entrepreneurs yes yeah. good question yeah there of course there are many things but um seeing the market with younger not experienced um founders um i think this one thing would really help and i actually do this thing um ever since i learned it from my casino boss um he learned it from his all upbringing so he said keith get off the phone get up behind your desk and those monitors and mm -hmm. go walk the floor so in casinos we talk, talk we call it walk the floor right you go out to the down to the slot machine slot floor or whatever floor walk the floor be with the people because all business transaction is coming from the people mm -hmm. they are interacting in your business. Even online, there's a person on the other end. If you go walk the floor, be with the people, be with the users, the customers, and really just be there, you will understand the problem you're trying to solve to a very, very root level that you will find the solution that really resonates with your user. Because mm. you are there. Yeah. Right. Like um, you can see and interact. Right. Part of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, Makes you know, sense. we have the workshops or even classes. That I'm always there. I'm always talking to the people and you are always there. I'm always and there. And where is there, Keith? Let the listeners know where you're so located. So our headquarter is in, inside of Provo Town Center Mall right now. Yeah. And it's unconventional, but it's fun. Doubling the population of that mall every day, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm always there and just really walk the floor and you'll be amazed. Um, yeah, you just just try it out. Walk the floor and talk to the people and see what come out of it. Yeah, cool. That's really good advice. You definitely don't want to lose touch with your business mm -hmm. and it's really easy to do. Oh, yeah. You Especially now with the tech, right? Everybody think you can solve yeah, the entire true. world's problem behind the monitors and writing line we of have code. email and slack yeah. and we have you know it's the messaging and you think okay we're well connected but until you go out and see what's going on you don't really yeah. know everything there is to know right and you see the like this right you see people's faces and you'll be amazed how much people are willing to tell you if you're there yeah 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 those interactions and i think a lot of that was lost or hard to uh ascertain during COVID because we weren't yeah. together and we weren't face to face mm -hmm. and person to person well cool. you can still walk the floor during COVID. it's really just do you care uh, if you do care show them you care and sure. when they realize you care about it they tell you exactly what they're looking for and once you know exactly what they want you just deliver exactly what they ask for and then boom the transaction happens but if you don't walk the floor, you're going to have that disconnect. 
Keith, I'm sure, you know, having gone from the corporate world and then the entrepreneur world, right? I'm sure that's a big shift and you've talked about that. But, um, and, and you have it together and you're an amazing leader. I've seen you in action, the way you command the le- uh, meetings and the way you interact with your artists and things. You've got it all put together, but there's got to be some fear that you've had along the way that you've learned how to conquer. What, what is that fear? And how did fear. you conquer it? Oh mm-hmm. man, fear. We always have fear. We always have that fear inside that's stopping you. And Is there a particular fear that I'm, stresses I'm, you out? I'm thinking... It, it's kind of a harder question for me yeah. by design because I tell myself um, intentionally to put myself in a fearless mode. Hmm. And think about that. There, there's fear of not good enough. You won't succeed. You will lose c- customer and all that stuff. But when you have those fear, you, you get stuck in this fear zone and then yeah. you can't get out. Paralyzes so, you, yeah. Yeah, 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 all that stuff, right? So I kind of tell myself to put myself in a fearless mode and really to be honest i'm kind of in the fearless mode it's just i find i find ways to Hmm. um i think one fear it i would really um want to mention is the fear of my kids life in danger Hmm. no matter how much i want to shake it off they will always get me always Hmm. yeah I think it goes back, I mean, just the premise of his, you know, his elevator pitch or his 30-second pitch to us about what his business is, yeah. is to get rid of that fear. Yeah. And so it makes sense that Keith's operating in that space. In a no-fear zone. In a, a no-fear zone. Yeah, I, I, like I put myself in this position, like, for a reason, like, for the past 10 years, I saved money, I put things away, and I took jobs to learn a specific skill set just so I can do this now. I've been prepping this in the past. For a while, yeah. So I can be in the fearless mode. So I'm not doing this for money. I'm not doing this for whatever. Like, I'm really just hanging out. Like, you call me to do this. I'm like, sure, let's go do it. (laughs) And it's a good place to be. I enjoy it. I mean, there's stress, but it doesn't mean that I don't enjoy it. Stress is a problem to solve, and that feel me. If there's no problem to solve, I'll be so bored. Okay, so you've been running this company for a while, uh, and what's a what's a setback or a major challenge that you've faced, and how did you kind of power through that? I always share this with people: when plans don't change, change your plans, don't change your vision. So sometimes you may think this is a setback, just change your plans, and you find a way out. So a lot of times, when things or setback um, happens to me, it's a signal for me to step back, re-examine what is happening, and then change my plan. And because I'm an artist myself, I treat it like painting a portrait, right? You get too close to the problem, and then you just get stuck in this, oh, the nose is not working. You step back, you're looking, and you're like, oh, then I just go work on the cheek or the eyes first, and then come back to the nose. And then when other things work out, then this will work out. So, um. That's kind of how I treat it. So I, I wouldn't say like I'm able to pinpoint a certain setback because we always come out stronger from a little um, obstacle. But if I really have to name one setback would be um, just finding the A-team to join our recruiting. Team. Yeah, recruiting is so hard right now. Mm-hmm. Um, we have the budget. We want to hire a good, talented marketing person and Obviously, you throwing see, it out there to all you marketing folks out there. Yes, <laughs> um, <laughs> you see, there are a lot of big companies out there. By the same time, again, we go back to that: what do you want to bet on your life, right? You want to join a great billion-dollar company, good startup, but you never know when they're gonna all of a sudden make you available in the market, mm. and along with one third of the other workforce to be available in the market and then get picked up by another one, and then you just kind of play that game to never get out. Or you can join us and really do what you love with no fear and then build what you want to build because we trust and empower our team, not just our users, also the team too. Like we empower them to make them feel like um, they're in the fearless mode. Like Coulter, he's a great example. Yeah, he is great. I love that. Yeah. If if someone does hear this and they are looking for the perfect position and they have, you know, that background in in uh, art and they're very interested in working with you and Sentient Academy, 
Where do they go to apply, Keith? Um, just reach out to me, like Keith at sentientacademy.com. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, awesome. so I always like to meet the people, get to know them first, and see what they can do and what they want to do. Like that idea of empowerment, like it, again, is that, and that is kind of truly what we do here. It's such a weird, unique business model that I, it's hard to put into words. Because when I left, when I walk away from my job, the CEO said, is there money in it? And I'm like, again, you think there's not, I will show you there is, and there is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so the question I'm gonna ask, it's funny that you mentioned money, and is there <laughs> money in it, right? So Keith, let's go to a hypothetical world just for a second, right? If money were no object, uh, object and not a factor in any part of your psyche, w would you be doing this right now, building a company, or would you be doing something else? I'm curious. Very interesting, because earlier today, before. I had a chance to just sit down with my wife in the backyard and look uh -huh. at her and we just really had She's that. a gem, by the way. We love her. She's so oh, great. Thanks. Um, we have the same question or conversation. Like, uh -huh. We're exactly where we want to be right now. Wow. Like It's a big accomplishment. Because we started with like, do we want more money? Do you want to make more money? Oh, yeah, I guess we can make. And soon the conversation turned into what are you going to do with all that money? And then we're like, if we make more money, what are we going to do? Mm -hmm. Probably just sit here now, enjoy this freedom. <laughs> and I realize our <laughs> life is thing. exactly where we want it to be and that nothing would ever change with more money. I mean, granted, you may have a bigger house, you may have extra cars, you may have more vacation, but still, by the end of the day, what we crave is that freedom of yeah. I want to sit down and enjoy the backyard. I get to sit down and nobody's going to buck me. And to me, that's why I left. Hmm. The whole corporate thing is I want that freedom. And the freedom, I value freedom way too much that I won't give it up for money. Hmm. Really. That's your why right there. Yeah. I love that. Freedom yeah. over money. Yeah. Love it. Okay. I think this is one of our last questions. Uh, but... What do you hope that when people think back about their experience with you, what do you hope that they remember you for? I hope they re remember. So I have a mentor that really means a lot to me, almost like a father figure. Um, when I moved here from Taiwan and he, Dr. Kevin. And Bear, how long ago was that, Keith, roughly? That, that was back at Dixie when I met you. Um, right, right. He's, he was teaching accounting and then he passed away a couple of years ago. Mm which it was really hard for me. Um, one thing he, I, we always remember, he said, you share if you care. Hmm. And I think that's what I want people to remember is you share if you care. Like just pat, you know, pay forward. I want to feel like I'm sharing enough to make a difference in their life that they'll remember that enough to have the motivation and actually take action to share what they have with someone else. Hmm. And I think that's what I really care about. Like, yeah. Love that. Well, Keith, um, what, uh, the, the last question is kind of a dual question. What, what final piece of advice would you give entrepreneurs, you know, and then what's next and big on the horizon for Sentient Academy? <laughs> Ooh. Answer those two questions. And then we will wrap up here at the Midnight Founders podcast. Oh yeah. The stakes already. This is a good place to have interview, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. The first, wait, what was the first one again? <laughs> what, what piece of advice would you oh, give yeah, entrepreneurs? Piece of advice. What lasting advice could you help them out with? One piece of advice, I would really say go out and get some experience under your belt. Mm -hmm. It makes a huge difference. I work in a company from... Like the, in the casinos? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> if you want to learn a ton... <laughs> Just yes. kidding. <laughs> no. If you really want to learn a ton and like work, perform well under pressure, yes, go there. Um... <laughs> Or army, I was in the army. Um, really, like, get that mileage in and the experience and work under someone and prove yourself to get into a position where you can run the team. That will earn the respect because you've been there and people know you can do what you say you want them to do. Right, so a lot of um, entrepreneurs I see, it's really, they just feel like, oh, I got an idea, I can do it. I go out and they never work in a company. 
then it, it still can work as you see, right? But at the same time, um, if you really want to just be like, hey, this is my first startup, I'm making it happen, um, that would be something that I really recommend. It's, and this is my first startup. I mean, we are not crazy successful, but you know, things are getting better every day as things we see it. really well, actually. Yeah. And the next thing, um, ooh, Vision X. Um, every July, every summer, we have a annual conference. It's virtual. It's global, mm -hmm. and it's really getting really big. We have how many people are attending now? Or last year we got twenty four hundred okay. for the first year event. Granted, you know, virtually makes it easier, but this year we are um, thinking about making it even bigger, and we already have some big sponsors um, coming in and. Last year, all together, all of the presenters, we have over 100 presenters. All together, we have over 10 million social following reach. Wow. And this year, we want to at least double that. And we already have some really good um, traction from Fantastic. the leading artists. Yes. Love people it. hear about it, they're like, yeah, I'm in. Or anything for you guys. Or, you know, just all good things that's thrown our way. And we're really excited. So... When is that going to happen? This year is July 29th to 31st. And Three days straight. How do they get, how do they find that? Yeah. How do they find that? Um, how do they get tickets? Register, that sort of thing. Yeah, visionxlife.com. Sweet. Okay. Yeah, so we're getting ready to put out the And new it's for anyone, right? Anyone can attend. Yeah, like you just want to come and see how people make this amazing art. We have people from traditional like the top landscape artists, portrait artists, or traditional artists to the people who are working on Avatar sequel movie with James Cameron, the mm. art directors there. That's and yeah. yeah, like, you know, all spectrum, we promote cross pollination. Again, that idea of empowerment. We want people to come, recharge their battery, feel like, yes, I can do this. And then they leave, they spend the whole year just revisit these ideas and become better and better and next year come and share their knowledge again and just kind of push everybody forward so that's what vision x is all about exciting yeah looking forward to the summer then yeah no sleep until then <laughs> <laughs> well again uh this is keith wong with sentient academy thanks for joining us today on the midnight founders podcast with jake and i keith yes. appreciate having you here